As part of the Vietnam War effort, the United States flew 80,000 sorties into Cambodia, neighboring Cambodia, a country with which the U.S. was not technically at war. And actually, the number of sorties could have been three times that. We do know that the United States dropped at least three times as much bomb tonnage on Cambodia as had been dropped on World War II Japan which is saying something. Now the targets of the US campaign, this secret war in Cambodia, North Vietnamese forces who used Cambodia as a, a travel route where they could evade US forces in South Vietnam and uh, North Vietnamese forces who were stationed here as well as the armed wing of the Communist Party of Kampuchea, otherwise known as the Khmer Rouge. But there's a major dilemma when it comes to bombing, obviously. See, someone runs through a village and slices everyone's throat with a knife. That person's crazy, and they've committed mass murder. And it's terrible, and we all condemn it. But someone in a uniform drops a bomb from the sky with the same result, indeed, an even more destructive result. Not just all human life, but everything else is destroyed. You know, that's just war. That's just the way it is. We certainly don't condemn that person, that, that pilot, or the person who gave the order. In the same way, we'd condemn someone who did the same thing just with a knife instead of a bomb. Bombs are anything but surgical. In fact, they're the opposite of surgical. They more or less guarantee murder. And certainly if you use them a lot, if you're planning on dropping thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, you're guaranteeing mass murder, murder on a massive scale. And with the U.S. bombing campaign in Cambodia, we see that, we see that illustrated. Even in the words of the campaign's architect, National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger. His order was this, anything that flies on anything that moves. Now at least 50,000 people, civilians, men, women, and children, died from this U.S. bombing campaign. And I've seen scholarly estimates that are 10 times that high, going up past 500,000. Think about, think about this. This, this is, certainly has approached genocide levels. And again, these are civilians. These aren't North Vietnamese or Khmer Rouge militants. These are just men, women, and children, civilians. And what's the result of bombing villages? And countless Cambodian villages were bombed. So what's the result? Well, according to the CIA itself, and this may sound somewhat familiar these days, the result was that the Khmer Rouge could use US bombings very successfully. In fact, as the main theme, according to the CIA, the main theme of their recruitment propaganda. And the numbers seem to demonstrate the, the truthfulness of this assessment. In 1969, the Khmer Rouge forces sat at around 10,000. But after four years of intense escalated or saturation bombing by the US government, Khmer Rouge militant forces had ballooned swelled to over 200,000, 200,000. Again, this should sound somewhat uh, familiar to us today. Now, there were other reasons for the Khmer Rouge's success, obviously, besides the U.S. bombing. Uh, there was the inept, corrupt, confiscatory policies of the Cambodian government itself that the Khmer Rouge could use for propaganda purposes. And there was conquest by the North Vietnamese, which benefited the Khmer Rouge. Often this territory was just handed over to them. Um, so other factors obviously going into play here, but it's hard to deny the devastating impact of the years-long, massive, very bloody U.S. bombing campaign in Cambodia. Speaking of the Cambodian government, in 1970, the regime of Prince Sihanouk was booted out in a coup led by a general named Lon Nol. And there is some evidence that the U.S may have been involved here too in orchestrating this coup. Now, this evidence is anything but certain. We can't, we can't speak about this with any certainty, but that there are a few things we can say about this coup uh, and about those involved. The Lon Knoll's deputy prime minister, and later prime minister, a guy named Sirik Matak, may have been a CIA asset. And in 1969, the year before the coup, it may have been, probably was him, who, uh, he who suggested to Lon Nol the idea of the coup in the first place, the idea of getting rid of the prince. 
Uh, Lon Knoll himself that same year, 1969, may have been in touch with the U.S. military, possibly to sort of measure their level of support should such a coup take place. Certainly the prince himself felt the CIA had orchestrated the coup. In a 1973 book, he explicitly blamed the CIA for engineering the coup that, that had him booted out of power. So, What is the truth? Who knows? I don't know. And uh, as yet, as I mentioned, we can't say anything with certainty. One thing we can say is that after the coup, no question, the new uh, right-wing Law Knoll regime was backed by the U.S. government. Well, desperate to get power back, Prince Sihanouk allies with the Khmer Rouge, the new government's most powerful enemy, right? Uh, he allies with them. Meanwhile, the Viet Cong, the North Vietnamese, you know, they're, they're not liking developments in Cambodia. This new regime, this new right-wing regime, uh, will be anti-Vietnam, obviously, anti-North Vietnam. And so the Viet Cong is moving deeper and deeper into Cambodian territory. Uh, to prevent the establishment of, you know, American bases, an American position in Cambodia. Okay, so these are very alarming developments to the Vietnamese, but that movement into Cambodia will invite more American bombings, which it does, and it turns out a lot more American bombings. And uh, this allows the Khmer Rouge to continue and even ratchet up their propaganda efforts, their recruitment efforts, very successfully. Like they're telling people now that the, the Lon Nol regime is actually inviting these U.S. bombings. And it turns out to, to actually be true. But uh, anyway, this is what they tell people, and they say, look, unless you want to turn to foreigners, what's the most, uh, uh, what, what local force has the most chance of being able to topple the Lon Nol regime and thus bring about an end to the U.S. killings? Well, it's us, the Khmer Rouge, of course. Uh, this is very successful in terms of recruitment. And all the while, the American bombings were used not just as a recruitment tool, but also as an excuse to purge moderates from the party, as well as to implement ever more radical, ever more brutal policies. See, there's a lot of evidence, it's really important to understand, there's a lot of evidence that suggests that before the bombings, Pol Pot and his radicals made up just a minority of the Communist Party of Kampuchea, maybe a very small minority, but the bombings changed all that. See, that's the thing about bombings. Uh, they have a knack not just for incinerating and burning and maiming, but also for militarizing and radicalizing. Well, with the signing of the Paris Peace Accords, the Khmer Rouge's story seems confirmed when the bombing stops in Vietnam, when the bombings stop in Laos, but not in Cambodia. In Cambodia, the bombings, the U.S. bombings, keep going. Why? Well, to protect the Lon Nol regime. In fact, the Lon Nol regime was providing intelligence to the U.S. military, you know, identifying uh, alleged enemy training camps, which would then be hit by U.S. bombs. Well, it turns out lots of these enemy training camps are actually just gatherings of Lon Nol's own political enemies, gatherings in villages. So the U.S. is hitting countless villages, as well as towns across Cambodia. Uncle Sam is leveling these villages and towns. Okay? Many of these people will die burning to death in their fallen houses. This is really, really devastating stuff. Most of the bombs are dropped in these last few months. Take all the bombs, add all that tonnage up over four years. Most of it's dropped in these last few months. Anyway, terrible, terrible stuff. Devastating and a great boon to the Khmer Rouge. Finally, Congress and the Supreme Court forced President Nixon to bring an end to the killing in Cambodia, too. Well, when victorious Khmer Rouge forces marched into Phnom Penh in April 1975, they ordered the evacuation of the city. They emptied the city. In fact, they emptied all of Cambodia's cities and towns. Just emptied them. And the excuse they gave was that the Americans were going to bomb Phnom Penh. An excuse only lent some plausibility by the fact of years of American bombings in Cambodia previous to that time. Confused residents gathered up what they could if they had time to gather anything and marched out over the course of the next few days, some starving. There was looting and other craziness and they were marched out into the countryside, destination unknown. Of course, they'll be herded onto collective farms, collectivized farms, where uh, they'll be worked to death, starved, executed, 
to the tune of two to three million Cambodians dead. Okay, this represents a fifth to a quarter of the entire country's population. In order to accomplish Pol Pot's dream of a totally agrarian, completely self-sufficient, Khmer communist utopia. One of the great disasters in human history. In fact, I'm standing in front of one of Pol Pot's famous killing fields. There were hundreds of killing fields around Cambodia. Surely they've not all been discovered. These are mass grave sites. These would be the, the Khmer Rouge equivalent to death camps, uh, execu mass execution sites. Anyway, this is just one, some 20,000 people at least were executed here, not by guns and bullets, but by machetes and hammers, and shovels and sticks. There's a, there's a pile of skulls here, 9,000 human skulls piled up here in a stupa of remembrance. In 1979, Vietnam invaded Cambodia and kicked out the Khmer Rouge regime. But incredibly, the United States then backed the Khmer Rouge regime. Now, why would it do this? Because at that point, U.S. foreign policy was focused on isolating Vietnam in the region. And that meant supporting Pol Pot and his still sizable guerrilla army, which had been driven to the you know, Thai-Cambodia border area. The U.S. government propped up the Khmer Rouge as the legitimate Cambodian government in the United Nations. The U.S. encouraged the Chinese to directly aid militarily and financially the Khmer Rouge and Pol Pot. The uh, U.S. may have contributed to that. The U.S. certainly did contribute millions, tens of millions, in aid and uh, weapons to Khmer Rouge-affiliated groups and guerrillas. And all the while, obviously, the U.S. made no attempt to apprehend Pol Pot, much less see him you know, on trial. This would have opened a particularly unsavory can of worms for some within the U.S. government itself, not to mention the Cambodian government. There's some former Khmer Rouge officials there too who would rather not see this. So as a, as a result, the Khmer Rouge continued to live on, indeed bolstered by United States support in the U.N. as well as financial and material support uh, directly and through the Chinese. Uh, the U.S. also encouraged U.N. relief agencies to provide relief, which then ended up in Khmer Rouge hands. The U.S. refused to use the word genocide to describe what had happened in Cambodia. It wasn't until 1989 that the U.S. finally officially used the word genocide to describe Khmer Rouge activities while it had been in charge in Cambodia. Now the U.S. did resettle 150,000 Cambodians who'd been made refugees by the Vietnamese invasion in the United States. But U.S. culpability and complicity in the continued existence of and strengthening of the Khmer Rouge along that Thai-Cambodian border region for years after the genocide, after it's, it's being ousted from Phnom Penh, that's undeniable. Did U.S. bombing in Cambodia help grow the Khmer Rouge and pave the way for its eventual rise to power, not to mention the four-year nightmare that followed? Did U.S. bolstering of the Khmer Rouge help keep Pol Pot alive from 1979 all the way till his death in 1998? Of course, if all this is true, it was done without the knowledge of the American taxpayer who paid for it all while being spoon-fed a more palatable narrative. In any case, you be the judge.